Hello guys and welcome along to lesson 18 this is of the basic programming lessons that I'm doing for you. Um, this one is really to do, uh, well it, it's a bubble sort we're going to do this time. If you think back to the last lesson that I did we created a program to generate six random lucky numbers for the lottery. Okay, and I mentioned in the last lesson that I wanted you to um, think about ways in which we could take those six numbers and put them in numerical order. Well, I'm not going to do that for you exactly this lesson, but I'm going to show you how we would go about sorting numbers into numerical order with a basic computer program. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this is not the only way we can do it. But this is the way that I'm going to do this one and we can um, hopefully give you some insight as to how to go about sorting numbers either upwards uh, or downwards, whichever way you want to go. Um, first of all, what I'm going to do before I explain how the program works is I'm going to show you the program in operation. If you haven't read the text in the lesson then I would suggest that you do so as it's a little bit involved it's heavy on logic this program so I would really really recommend that you read the tutorial on the site two or three times however many it takes to get your head around this because it really does take a bit of getting uh, used to okay so basically what we're going to do first of all is run it and you can see the unsorted numbers here are just the random numbers that it's generated in any random order. We're only picking numbers 1 to 10 here, so obviously we're going to get a few duplicates and what have you. And these are when it's sorted. As you can see, it's, it's 2 was the last number that it had. It's put 2 the first. 4 was the second number. It hasn't moved that one. 5 is the third number, so on and so forth. And they all go up numerically. Okay, so just to show you that running again, so you know that we're not going to get the same numbers again or anything like that, we'll just run that one again. There's your unsorted numbers this time, and there we go, sorted in, in numerical order. So basically that's generating 10 random numbers, and then it's putting those numbers numerical from the lowest up to the highest value. Okay, so basically that's, that's the program that runs, okay? So now what I want to do is go through and explain to you exactly how this works. Hopefully you've got a grasp for this. You really need a clear head for this one, guys. It takes a bit of thinking through. Basically, we've got what four sections to this program. Uh, the first bit are these three first lines here, 10 through 30, and they're just giving us the dimensions of the array 10. We dimension the array x to 10 because we're just going to be sorting 10 numbers. If you were going to sort 100 numbers and you dimension that to 100, so on and so forth. Uh, randomize, we've covered that before. I don't really need to go on that one. Uh, line 30, we're letting M, which I use for the maximum, uh, equal 10. That's got to equal the same number as the um, size of your array. Okay, so if you had 100 in there, that would have to be equal to 100. Um, so that's the first part of your program. The second part of the program really isn't needed, but I've put it in there so that you can compare, when you've just looked at the program, you can compare the unsorted numbers to the sorted numbers. But basically all we're doing here is creating a loop which goes from there to there. And in here, we're generating a random number. In this case, I'm multiplying it by M, which is 10, to give us a number between 1 and 10. But you could use any number you wished in there. If I put rand times 50 in there then we'd get a random number between 1 and 50 whatever we wanted okay that's not a massive problem so but what we're doing there is going through from 1 to 10 and letting the array x position a equal the random number that we're generating okay i've covered random numbers in the past so i'm not really going to spend some time on that um then the next part of the program is uh it prints them out in the unsorted order just so that you can compare that this is the this is the print statement here that those three lines there just print out your 10 numbers print out array x position a which varies from 1 to 10 print them out print a space there so that you can see there's a gap between them so if you've got 1 and 2 together for instance you don't think you're going to get 12 or something like that and it goes through from there 
Now this part from 110 through to 180, that is the meat of the program. Okay, this is what does all the calculations. So you've got like seven, eight lines of code there. That's all you've got there that does all the work. Okay, and this takes a little bit of getting your head round. <clears throat> so let me try and explain it to you. As I say, if you're not sure, refer back to the site and have a look at the text tutorial I've put on there. I hope that I've described it good enough for you. Any questions, you can post them on the site and I'll try and answer them for you. But basically here in 110 and 120, we're creating two loops. We're creating an inner loop within an outer loop. The outer loop will go from 1 to M, which is the maximum number of numbers you, you, you're sorting, minus 1. So in other words, in this case, loop B, the outer loop, will go from 1 to 9. Okay, you got that. And that's because we've got to sort through 9 positions, 9 times, in order to sort 10 numbers. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail a little bit further on. That's, you've just got to get your head around with that bit first. Line 120 is the second loop. This is what I call the inner loop. And C, in this case, is going from 1 to M, which is 10, minus B, where B is the variable in the outer loop. So on the first loop, it will go from 1 to 9, because M, which is 10, minus B, which would be still 1, would be 9. On the second outer loop, then it would be going from 1 to 10 minus 2, which is 8, because B would be equal to 2 on the outer loop. Now that sounds a little bit confusing, and I'm going to try and explain why we do that in a few seconds. And the reason being, <coughs> excuse me, is because if we've got 10 numbers to be sorted, in this line here, we're checking two numbers. We have to check if one number is bigger than the next number. And what we're using there is the variable C. So we're saying if x bracket 1, if it's the first time through, is less than x bracket 2, because 2 is C plus 1, i.e. 1 plus 1 is 2, then and it goes off to the next loop. So what we need to do is on this inner loop, it finds out the largest number and it moves it up one place every time until it comes to the end. The end being m minus b, 10 minus 1 or, or 9. We can't check we can't check any further than 10 because if we get if we got to if we did 1 to 10 here, 1 to m, then we would be m and we'd be checking for m plus 1 which is 11. 11 doesn't exist, therefore we'd get an error in the program, so that's why we do it this way. So basically what this is doing is going through, in the first instance, it's checking through from 1 to 9, and it compares position 1 with position 2 in the array. Now, if position 1 is smaller than position 2, then obviously position 1 is OK, it doesn't need to do anymore, so it goes to line 170, which sends it back on the inner loop. Now C would be equal to 2, B is the same, so C is equal to 2, so it would check if X2 is less than X3, because with 2 plus 1, with C being equal to 2, then, and it would repeat again. So if the numbers were in the correct order originally, then this part of the program would never be used. It would never be executed. Okay. So basically what that would do when it got through and found them all, it would go back to, it would come out of the next C and go to the next B when that loop finishes, when that inner loop finishes, and then B would then be equal to 2. So then it would go back and start back at C as 1 again, but this time instead of going to 9, which was M minus 1, it would only go to 8. Now I'm going to explain why we do that in just, just a second. Okay, so let's say that we've gone through the and, and we've we've gone through the first run of the inner loop and the largest number is now at position 10 
we don't need to check position 10 because we know that that's the largest number. The largest number by definition will go through with this system. So what we do, how we get to that stage is if x, let's say x1 is less than or is greater than I should say x2, so if the, if the value in x position 1 was let's say 10 and the value in x position 2 was 5 then it wouldn't go to 170 because it's not less than 10 is greater than 5 so therefore we'd hit this bit this is where it comes in we now have a temporary storage variable called t uh, what we do with t we let t be equal to x1 in this case if it was the first loop through so t would now be equal to 10 and then what we do is we take x position 1 and let that be equal to x position 2 because x position 2 being 5 is smaller than the old x position 1 which was 10 so now x position 1 becomes 5 x position 2 is still 5 because we haven't put anything in there yet it's just copied the value across to x position 1 that's where this line comes in and we say let x position 2 or c plus 1 if you like be equal to the temporary value we've stored in t which was the higher value that we put in here so basically these three lines here have just swapped the numbers around it's a bit like if you have a mug of coffee in one hand and a mug of tea in the other hand and you want to switch them round you can't you need you need to put one of them down say on a table and then change one cup to your other hand and then pick the cup up from the table in your other hand that's basically what we're doing here okay so using this system the highest number will automatically go to the end of the loop because it checks all the way through the numbers right the way to the end it'll come out of the next C and then we go to the outer loop which then becomes 2 now why it becomes 2 is because we need to go the total number of uh, variables we're going to check it's in this case 10 minus 1 we don't need to check 10 because if we've got 9 in order by definition the first one has to be the smallest number because we check two numbers every time a little bit confusing hopefully I'm not going too fast for you you may need to replay this a couple of times to get it but basically what we do now if B is equal to 2 we don't need to check position 10 so what we're saying now is that the C loop goes from 1 now to 8 basically so this system will kick in and it will go through its, its loop that I've just explained what it does until it becomes to 8 so X it will check X8 if X8 is less than X9 then go to and then the reason why it goes to 8 we don't need to go to X9 to check against x10 because x10 is in the correct position is the, the correct order okay so when it comes through the loop again it goes back to next b b will then become three so when you start the inner loop again it will be one to ten minus three which is seven and the loop will continue through checking each variable in the positions until it becomes through to x7 is less than x8 we don't need to check 9 and 10 because on the third loop through okay which is the outer loop um, we've got 9 and 10 will be in the correct order so on and so forth until the next b until b reaches 1 minus the total number which will then end the sort routine little bit heavy that on logic i'm sorry about that that's what it is then i put a simple print statement in there to start a new line so that the two lists are separated and then a quick print out there the titles just a quick thing the sort numbers are and then just a quick simple loop these next three lines here from one to ten and print out the sorted numbers which will be now sorted in the array x in order and then basically the program ends 
And that's about it. I hope that I've explained it good enough for you. You should have picked up a lot of this stuff from the earlier lessons. If not, you'll have to go back and see. As I say, you can come onto the site and give us a shout if you're stuck with anything. And I'll try and explain it a little bit better. But that's about all I can do for now. What I'd like you to do, if you've got your head around this, or when you get your head around this, is to try and combine this program, or parts of this program, you don't need all this program, with the previous program in the previous lesson, that was lesson 17, so that when the um, lesson 17 program prints out your six lucky numbers for your lottery, then adapt this program so that it will take those six numbers, sort them numerically, and print them out in ascending order. Okay? So, see how you get on with that, guys. Thanks for watching the video, and thanks for all your support so far. Okay? Bye for now.